started out as an astronomer. What inspired you to change course and start a training program for data scientists? So I was, uh, I was, I wanted to become an astronomer since I was 13 years old and borrowed a book on astronomy at the local library. So it was a straight career for me to become a PhD and, and to start that career. But quite soon I realized that there were certain aspects of the work I enjoyed more than others. And it turned out it wasn't so much the science bits, <laughs> it was more the organizational bits, managing projects, working with people, etc. And at some point I just, I just realized this is what I want to do. I'm not going to be able to do that in science. I need to find a career elsewhere. And when I wanted to make that transition, I actually found it very, very difficult because I didn't know what skill set I had that industry was interested in. I didn't know how to present myself to industry. Um, and in desperation, I came to the UK to do an MBA to learn about business and figure out what to do with my life. And so it was in thinking about that challenge that I had faced leaving academia that I decided to co-found this business together with my, my co-founder who comes from a recruitment background and we really started it with that passion of let's make this transition easier for this wonderful talent that we know we have in our universities. And so what's different about your programs called S2DS, correct? Yes. What's different about your program from other training programs? So what we do is we take these analytical PhDs and graduates who want to become data scientists get them to work on projects with companies for five weeks and thereby try to commercialize those skills that they have. And I think there are three key differences with our program compared to others. Uh, we are very commercial in our focus. It's all about getting them to work with companies, with commercial tools, with commercial data. We are very large, so we have a big alumni. We have about 200 alumni already. We're gonna have 300 at the end of the year. So that's a great network that they join. And really, one something we're very proud of is our diversity. So we have, for this summer, for example, coming into the program, we have 30 nationalities. We have about 35, 40% female on the program. We have 18, 20 different disciplinary backgrounds. So a very diverse group. And we feel that this adds so much to, to their learning and also to their future careers. And in your journey to create the program, what kinds of challenges did you face and were there any surprises? The biggest challenge really was we had to go out and create those partnerships with companies to get them to come and do projects with our PhDs and to convince them, first of all, that these PhDs could do the job because they were quite hesitant and skeptical about that. And secondly, also for them to realize this is something you should be doing. We started this three years ago and there were a lot of companies who were not doing anything in big data. And, and to get them to make that investment and to try it out, that, that was a big challenge. In terms of surprise, it's actually, I knew that the PhDs coming into the program would be fantastic, but I guess when we started to get the applications, we started to meet these people. They just absolutely blew me away with how smart they are, how motivated they are, how enthusiastic they are, and they're, they're just a fantastic group, group of people to be among. That's great. So shifting gears just a little bit, yeah. um, what emerging areas of data science or data science education or emerging technology in general do you keep an eye on? When you read papers or studies, what is it you're reading and what are you finding most interesting? So I'd, I'd say two things. Uh, one is artificial intelligence. That's on everyone's mind right now after DeepMind, beating, beating um, Lisa Dole in Go, etc. Um, that's a big topic coming up. I was very pleased to see that O'Reilly is now doing an AI conference in New York uh, this August, September. Um, looking forward to hopefully going there and, and learning more about it. The other thing that's more local here possibly is that um, the government here is doing a lot around skills in, in this sector. There's a lot of work. Um, the government recently set up a task force to really examine we, where is the skills gap and, and what can we do about it. And I also chair a Tech UK group specifically on this topic where we work a lot around how can we get the education system to create the skills that we need. So, so those are two separate issues that, that I like to keep an eye on. And so to close with something just a little more personal, what people or projects are you following? What, what are you finding personally interesting these days? Um, 
actually the, the something I'm quite interested in the more uh, esoterical aspect of data. There was a great exhibition here in London last autumn about big data and art and big data and visualizations. And I, I, I always get amazed by what you can do with a very creative mind and how you can visualize data in exciting ways, in ways that reaches the public and, and makes them curious to, under, to understand more. Uh, and the other area is that we're also very much involved with is getting more charities to use their data. So we're working with DataKind, for example, here in the UK, and we're also working directly with charities in helping them use their data for good and getting good value out of that and helping people with it. So those are two more personal things maybe that I'm quite excited about. Well, thank you very much for talking with me today. This has been fun. Thank you. It's great to be here. Always great to be at a Strata Conference.